What's up, everybody? So, as you can see by this photograph, this is a popper update. Um, I'm going to be going through a lot of information that I've had, uh, a lot of uh, still shots, and uh, just some interesting things. Um, as you guys know, I was on the Smart Scarecrow Show, and I tried to blow up a, uh, a Christmas cup, Grandma's Christmas cup, and... Um, it didn't really work, and I would like to go through all of the pictures that I have been uh, taking, uh, lots of different things, and I'm just going to try to run through it. So I'm using some different uh, software for this. I'm going to be actually recording from my PC, so if you guys like this kind of thing, let me know, and I will attempt to do more of it. Um, it's a little bit more time-consuming, but definitely makes the presentation a lot more fun. Anyway, let's get started. Here's some footage from the Smart Scarecrow Show. Recording right now. You'll be able to do that on my YouTube channel. Standing outside. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. What happened? Oh. Well, that's good. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, so here you're going to see the aftermath in slow motion. Now, this footage was recorded in 60 frames per second, so each one of these frames is actually 1 60th of a second. Uh, so let's go. Uh, there'll be more of these pictures. i got a lot of different stuff to show you, so these are just the beginning phases, but here it is. So this, what you see right here, is the... Uh, the rolling of the frame of the camera. You'll see that in all of the shots, so don't be fooled. It's not like some traveling wave plasma captured or something like that. It's just the frame rate of the camera. So there's the initial blast. Now here's the interesting part. That's frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's about nine frames. Um, so a tenth of a second where this cup is glowing green that is pretty wild um, uh, we know that the ionization will will kind of die off and it will last for a short period of time but to physically see it like that is just interesting now the thing that I figured out here and like I said there will be more later uh, we'll go to the next batch alright so here's the first fire and second frame, third frame, fourth frame. Now that right there, that's the fifth frame, but look what happens. I'll keep going. Sixth frame, again that's just the camera frame rate. Alright, and there you go. So, going back to the beginning of that. And that looks pretty blurry, doesn't it? Alright, so here's what happened on this one. This is what gets interesting, and I've got a bunch more photos to show you about this, so I won't spend too much time here, but the the firing right there, um, I, I actually hit the button twice right there. So this is just the aftermath, and the cup is pre-ionized, okay, which is what we need to actually start doing is pre-ionizing, and the next phase is, boom, a little bit of a capacitor discharge there and then it fades off. So you don't really get the green glow afterwards, okay? It's not quite the same. So basically what that's telling me is the pre-ionization is actually allowing for this system to fire again. So if we were firing this like an engine, it would actually be extremely helpful. So I'll explain more of that here in a little bit, uh, but here is the, uh, the next. This is another one. Um, and then there's the second flash okay now what's interesting is that the second flash only works if I fire it while it's still got some pre-ionization if I try to fire it again later uh, it doesn't do that now again this is with capacitors not charging this is just with them charging one time and then firing it so frame one two three four five six seven and then there is the second discharge. Eight, nine, ten. Alright, so 
I will show you more of that later, but uh, that's the Christmas Cup Smart Cri Scarecrow Show adventure. So let's move on to the next phase. Right, so during the Smart Scarecrow Show, you guys noticed that the, uh, or, or I, uh, aftermath, I told you guys that the cup didn't explode. Well, the cup was actually leaking. Um, and it's very, very interesting. So it's something I'm going to try to show you guys here, but it's very hard to hear. I'm going to try to bring the audio up so you can actually hear it. But right in this area right here, there was a leak. And whenever I fired this thing, it would actually hiss for about a second and a half or so. Um, very unique, so I'm going to try to show you that right now. Leaking cup. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm going to talk. So I'm going to fire it, then I'll tell you how long it hisses. There. It just stopped. Nice Alrighty stuff. then. So, as you can tell, that uh, is leaking. Very interesting. It's very hard to hear, but it was actually leaking for quite a while. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to show you is the same thing except something very unique happens um, and when this fires it fires really quick there's an abrupt pressure release and then it takes forever I don't know if it was going back in or coming out um, I was I, I guess it's going back in but I couldn't tell but anyway check out these photographs and then we'll we'll talk about them so there's frame one two three four five six okay now here's the interesting part frame one see this right here that's on the outside of the cup we'll go to frame two it's still going through the air and then frame three it's gone but the reason that is unique or interesting is because I'm 99 percent sure that that actually got through this like leak all right it escaped through the leak and got out that's not something that came from somewhere else because um, I just know it's not. Um, so, very, very weird. Um, and uh, that basically, I'll show you later that some of the particles do come off the electrodes, and so that's actually a part of the electrode. It actually escaped through the, the cup that fast and uh, dissipated, so kind of weird. Alrighty. This is approximately 800 milliliter glass jar upside down. I'm going to do this in air a couple of times and see what the reaction is and then I'll fill it up with helium. So I'm going to turn just that light on. Uh, this might break. I guess I should... well uh, it'll be alright as long as it's focused. So this is uh, just the high voltage. So let's go ahead and uh, charge it up. 350 volts. And see what happens. Alright, so I should note here real quickly that when I use air, the electrodes break down a lot. Volts. So please keep that in mind when you see pieces flying everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to fill it up with helium, and we'll see what our result is. Alright guys, so I'm finding it uh, that uh, this video is getting pretty long already, so I'm going to try to rush through these photographs. Um, I'm not really going to show you a whole lot of the regular footage, I'm just going to go through these still shots, because it's really the most important thing. So, let's get started. Uh, as you can see in this photograph, this is just one of the flashes of the uh, dis capacitor discharge in that tall glass phase type of jar. So here's what I've done. Uh, you can see here I've got air at atmosphere, helium at negative uh, 10, not really PSI, but uh, inches of mercury, and then uh, helium at negative 20.5 inches of mercury, and then helium at 
a positive uh, pressure and then uh, that's it so each one of these is a burst we're just gonna go through each one and I'm gonna do it as fast as I can so here we go second frame third frame fourth fifth sixth and back at the beginning so again this is um, air at one atmosphere or at at atmosphere I should say so this is the second shot same type of thing is happening alright so we'll go to the next one I'm gonna cut all this stuff out alright so here's the next one one two three four five six seven okay so now we are going to do it's kinda slow with the recording let's start at helium negative twenty point five and again the frames are sliced so here's the first frame the second frame now there is a really nice green glow um, I did pull a vacuum but there's probably still oxygen in there second frame third frame fourth fifth sixth seventh oh back to the beginning so there's fire one and this is number two So there's first frame, second frame, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine. So between nine and ten frames. Go ahead and get rid of some of these. I like how this opens up new windows, but it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. So, we'll go ahead and do the third one. Alright, this is the third fire. First frame, second frame, third frame, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, ten. So, it's always about ten frames. You can see that glow how long it takes to dissipate the ionization All right. so now we're going to do helium at negative ten alright this is helium at negative ten so there's the first frame second frame third fourth fifth sixth seventh eight nine ten alright so we'll go ahead and do the second blast alright so this is the second blast at negative ten with helium and here's the interesting thing this blast did something totally different. The electrodes bursted, basically. Uh, a fraction came off and was glowing in the cup. So this is first frame, second frame, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right so it's very unique in the fact that you don't see the green glow instead you see the basically the shrapnel glowing red uh, hot or white hot as it looks and then quickly dying off Okay, so that's kind of a unique thing now we're gonna move on to helium at 5 psi 
Well, here's the one-shot photographs firing at one single time. And this is what it looks like. Very similar to the rest of the stuff we've been seeing. Okay. Not much difference at all. By the way, these pictures are all over at the forums. Here is with the light on. Just to give you a better idea of what's going on. You can see that nice green haze going on in there. Alright, let me see if I can find some unique, because that's kind of generic. We've seen all this already, so let me see if I can find some of the odd ones where weird things were going on. Do do do. Um, here's a side shot trying to get the camera to not roll. Basically, I wanted to try to get the flash all at once. And you can see the top of the jar. There's a particle in there, a hot one. You can see the shadows. Usually you can actually see down here, you'll see some light. There, you see the ball dropping down in there. You can see the glowing right over here on the side. So let's watch that again. Frame one, two, three. There's a hot piece in there. Four, five, falling down. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten in there. You can see it at the bottom. Eleven. 12, 13, 14. So 14 frames. So that's kind of a unique one where the the piece of the electrode actually goes flying and that's because I'm using such high current. Here's another one. This is uh, similar. One. There's, see, the green glow. See, I don't have the hot particles and I get this green glow. So the hot particles definitely throw the system for a curveball. So I gotta make sure I do not blow up my electrodes, basically. So that was one shot. Now I'll show go ahead and show you a one shot looking through a lens on a uh, welding helmet, basically. So there's first frame, second frame, third frame fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, starting over. So it's kind of what it looks like if you'd like to see it through a lens. And again, that's just the frame rate. So let's go to the second one. Ba 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 ba. Here you can see there's looking like a little more green. That's again looking through a lens. Alright, enough of that. Now here is going to get kind of interesting. This is where it gets interesting. Um, so here I do the fire and hold. I did a bunch of these because they're all unique. Every one of them is different. So we'll just go through them one at a time. Alright, so again, like I said earlier in this video, a fire and hold. So, I'm firing it once, I'm holding the button. You can see, holding the button, holding the button, holding the button, and boom! There's the second capacitor discharge. And then it quickly, the color quickly fades out afterwards. Very unique. And this means that we are, the pre-ionization is allowing the, what's left of the capacitor discharge to actually able to fire the gas a second time with lower amount of input voltage. See my capacitors drop down to about 100 volts from 350 to 100 and then when I fire it a second time, if I let the system sit, I fire it once and then I come back and try to fire it again, it doesn't do anything. But when I do it rapidly like this, okay this is, you're talking you know, what six that's frame 5, I think, and you can see, again, that's just the camera. Looks kind of cool. Looks like a traveling plasma ball, but it's not. It's just the camera frame rate. Um, so again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven frames later, it fires again. All right, that's very unique. That means the pre-ionization is doing something. Let's go to the next one. There's a bunch of random weird stuff going on, and um, I'm just going to go through them all here so you can see them all. It's going to be a long video. But, uh, oh, see, that one was real short. So it fired once. Okay, that's the first fire. Frame one, two, three. The third frame it fired again. Instead of waiting for four or five frames, it, it fired on the third frame. And then that green glow doesn't really last near as long when that happens. Uh, it's very interesting. So, again, when I get shrapnel flying, and this, uh, no, maybe not this one. This isn't any shrapnel. Alright, so frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There, the seventh frame it fired. So random. It's so random. So let's go to the next one. There's one in here that's really interesting. We'll see if we can find it. This one looks like it had some hot particles. I call them hot particles. It's just the electrode breaking away. You can see how light it is right there. And you can see the orange glow. There's actually particles of the electrodes. Boop. There's that second flash. And again, it looks like a traveling plasma ball, but it's just the frames. So frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames later, it's still fired. All right, which is interesting. Okay, sorry about the long video, but you guys want details. I'll give them to you, but you're gonna have to wait. All right. Um, so here, frame one. I think this is the interesting one. Two. Yes. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right, back to one. Now check this out. Frame one frame two. You see these very interesting swirly looking type things? Those are the pieces of the electrodes. So frame two you can see they're like they're either bouncing off the glass or something. It almost if I go back and forward, it almost looks like they're like rotating around like the plasma field, almost as if it's magnetic. But I don't know if that's accurate. It might just be the angle I'm sitting at. So that's definitely an interesting one. Somewhere in here I've got some top shots, which are very interesting. Hopefully we'll get to them. Here we go. So here's shots from the top. Alright, let's go frame by frame. So there's frame one, two, three, four, five, six, and back to one. Alright, so this actually flashed twice in the third frame again. So there's one, two, and then three. It fires again. That's the second fire. Because this is a fire and a hold. Alright, and then there you can see the high voltage, but no plasma because there's the capacitors have been discharged twice. So off to the last one. I think this is the most interesting one of all. The hot particles. Check this out. Alright, so this is frame one. I'm just going to run through them, then we'll go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, 23, 24, back to the, okay, 23 frames. All right, so looking at that again, you can see the flash and then the piece of shrapnel frame by frame here. Um, a guy by the name of Axel over at the forums has mentioned using a heating element as a pre-ionization and um, that is something that I will be trying to basically get free electrons off of the uh, heating element um, actually like a filament and just get it just barely red 
um, and allowing this pre-ionization because check that second flash out. Here's what's weird about this whole thing. Let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Alright, so frame by frame here, the hot. Okay, if you look really close, and it is hard to see, there's an arc across there right now. Now there's not. And then I believe right there there is. And right there there is. And right there there is. And right there, and maybe not on them last ones, but you can see it definitely right there. You can see a defined arc. See it? So that's just the high voltage. And then look, the high voltage fires again, and nothing happens. And then, boom. Somehow the capacitors discharge after the third arc, um, which is very weird. So it's very unpredictable, but you can see that it definitely does happen. Now, like I said before, this does not happen unless um, the only time that this happens is is whenever you do it right after you fire it, and I mean within you know milliseconds, um, tenth of a second. Anything past that, like you can see in these frames at 60 frames per second, doesn't really doesn't really do anything. And um, so, pre-ionization is going to be a big help here. So, let's move on to the next thing. I don't know what's up next. Some random footage. We'll find out. Today is the uh, 12th of October. Alright guys, so back to the beginning. Um, this video was already way too long, so I'm going to be just making another update. This has been update number... Uh, yeah what number has it been 14 um, today is actually the 26th of October I recorded most of this on the 11th and 12th so it's been a while and that's it so God bless you guys I hope you'd like the presentation uh, set it up a little different this way hopefully it works out and if it does I'll be purchasing this software in case you're curious it is uh... yeah Cortel Video Studio Pro. So hopefully it will export this. Alright, peace and love to you all. God bless. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, comments are always welcome, although it is time consuming for me to get back with you. So if I do not get back with you, please don't uh, think I didn't appreciate it. Because I do. Alright. See you at the next update. Hopefully I can get it out right away. You'll like it.